I was trained as a researcher and I'm very interested in details and uh, looking at fine print and, and researching history. And one of the things that I wanted to do in the process of moving forward is find a little bit more about this instrument. I was to the point in my life now where I could look at making an investment into an instrument that I, I hope to have for the rest of my life. And I spent a lot of time looking at new instruments as well as older instruments, vintage instruments and the like. And in that process, I had a chance to hear a lot of different sounds. And the sound of the mason was a sound that I really liked and that, that spoke to me. And as I visited other companies and met with other people and saw their instruments, this one particular piano that actually I was familiar with uh, was one that kept coming back. This instrument was actually owned by an individual who lives in Minnesota, somebody I've known for many years. Uh, it was her late husband's instrument, his pride and joy. And after some thought and consultation with the family, uh, they agreed to sell the instrument. I explained to them my plans for the instrument and I wanted to make sure that it was restored. And so after uh, some additional time and discussion, we moved forward last year and I purchased the instrument. It still didn't sound to me as well as some of the other instruments that I had heard. Uh, I didn't quite speak with the warmth and, and that sense of richness and depth that I know instruments like this can sound like because I've heard them before. And so I began to look into rebuilding options and the like and traveled across the country had a chance to meet different people. One of the folks that I had a chance to meet was Paul Montachino, who worked for Mason and Hamlin for many, many years. He's in his early 90s now, and I visited with him, and we were talking about pianos and the work, and uh, he actually has the original Mason and Hamlin records at his home, and he invited me to come and see them when I was visiting New York, which I did actually. It was fascinating to go back and sit down with him and go through the Mason and Hamlin records. He recited for me the names of the artisans who built this instrument because he knew all of them. He began work in the company in the 1940s, and this piano, as I say, was built around 1927. It was shipped on October 1st. So it was great to be able to connect with somebody who has such an incredible history of and knowledge of the company, and who was very interested in this instrument and really thrilled that I brought it here to have the work done on it. He said they would do a phenomenal job, and he certainly wasn't kidding. And in talking with Paul um, about different companies, uh, Cunningham's came up and I investigated further. I had a chance to come out and visit with the staff and it proved to be an excellent experience. I had a chance to hear several of their pianos and meet their staff, their technicians, and it was very clear to me that this was the right company to do this work. Uh, I was especially impressed with the sensitivity that they showed uh, in answering my questions. Uh, listening to my concerns and making recommendations for moving forward and I think the results have been spectacular. Uh, I did not hear any pianos in this process uh, that were rebuilt with new soundboards that sounded as beautiful as the work that I heard from the instruments that were done here. Uh, it was, I was nervous, I'll admit it, as far as do I actually make the steps to take the steps to have the original board removed, but uh, it's been said that great art comes with risk and I was one to take that risk because I felt very comfortable with this company. By all means, I was convinced that I made the right decision uh, by the instruments that I heard and the results of this uh, instrument now, and I think uh, your ears can tell you all that you need to hear. It's quite phenomenal and I'm just thrilled with the outcome.